Hello everyone, this is Ben with ERP Connect Consulting and this is our third tutorial in the Getting Started with Business Central and Data Migration series. This video will review the base setup for your purchasing and payables data and we will review basic setup of configuration packages and what key fields to include when migrating data. So let's jump into our third session. If you do not have the base packages deployed, please reach out to our team and we can send those for easy import. Once deployed, we'll want to navigate to our third package labeled Purchasing and AP. If you need to navigate here at any time during the session, just come up to the search bar and type in config, and you should be able to navigate by the second option under the pages and tasks called configuration packages. Once here, go ahead and click on the purchasing an AP package, and you should see three tables in this package. Again, we've got a handful of fields that are available in each table. However, we're only gonna need a handful to accomplish what we need to get started. For example, out of the 89 fields available on the vendor, we can get by with about 36 to get started. If you do need additional fields outside of what's listed here, feel free to go to clear filter, edit list, and click into include field at any time and export the file, which will include those fields going forward. Once you have this package created, you can go ahead and click export to Excel and you should get an Excel file that looks like this with three tabs, vendor, order address, and vendor bank account. So as we get started, we'll review this field by field. Again, building off of our second session, it should look very similar to what we did for the customer setup. You'll have a number field, which again is gonna be a code. It's gonna be a limit of 20 characters. We'll have a name field. That's gonna be a text field of 100 characters. Again, feel free to hover over any of these to get the character limit, as well as the field type. We've got some basic name information, some basic address information here that you can type in, contact information, phone number, account number. If you have a different account number than what you have the BC number defined as, you can add that in here. The vendor posting group, similar to what we saw on the customer side, the vending, vendor posting group is going to be crucial. Domestic will indicate at this moment what AP account that vendor is posting to. We'll have a separate session on posting groups, but domestic is fine to get started. We got the payment terms code, which as you remember from the customer side, this would be a payment term table that we've already set up. Uh, again, these values are going to indicate both when the date is coming due for uh, you know aging purposes, as well as if we have any discounts on the payment terms to get early pay discounts. If you have a designated purchaser, you can set up purchasers within the system and add them here. Again, that's gonna be a code. Code again means that it's looking for a value from somewhere else in the system and it's not a free form field. The priority, you can indicate here, one, two, three, four, and so on. When we're doing payment runs, you can indicate the priority as to which vendors uh, are going to be paid. That's that field Q here, uh, column Q is really gonna be crucial in determining that priority. If it's left as zero, everything will just be indicated as you know holding equal weight and they will all be indicated to pay just simply on the due date. As we saw in the customer, we've got payment method code here, uh, indicated as bank. If you have a different payment method, feel free to select from that list that we saw in Business Central. The general business posting group, again, this is gonna be a code. It's looking for a value in the system. This general business posting group combined with the item posting groups that we'll see uh, on those service items. If you were to ever purchase, which service item might not be as applicable, but that general business posting group will still help uh, to post some of those purchasing accounts as well as the cost of goods accounts if you're using actual inventory items. Then we've got um, our zip code, state, email, homepage, some tax liability, and then the federal ID number, which here you can put the EIN uh, or any uh, number that would indicate what your who your vendor is. And then we've got our 1099 code here. So if they're a, a contractor, we can print 1099s out of the system at the end of the year. This column Z is going to indicate which vendors are 1099 and which amounts that we need to record in order to report at the end of the year back to our 1099 vendors as an example. As we jump over to order addresses, again, we can add additional order addresses that are held at the vendor level. You would need the vendor number here, again, pulling in from the vendor tab, as well as the code. Uh, in this case, you can also indicate name, address, um, some phone number, fax number if needed, um, emails, home pages, stuff like that. But again, when we jump into the vendor, if you have multiple order addresses, these are going to be selections anytime that you're purchasing from these vendors. 
And then finally, if you would like to pay your vendors directly out of Business Central in the forms of an ACH payment or an EFT payment, you can set up the vendor bank account information. What we would need here is just the vendor number, a code that we're gonna to use to indicate what bank account it is, the name, the bank number, and then the routing number. We'll also need to indicate that the use for electronic payments, we'll need to toggle this from false as it is currently back to true. And then as we're processing these payments, we would be able to export payments out of Business Central and send them to your bank to initiate to uh, each given vendor. Now this does require that we do some setup on the bank in Business Central. Each bank's a little bit different. So what we would require additionally there is to receive a specification file from your bank indicating how they need that file laid out and then we can configure it for you within Business Central if that's something you're interested in. So this one is a little lighter than the last one we looked at, but once you have your sheet populated, you can save this file down into a folder on your desktop. Then we'd come back into the package here, import the file from Excel, which you can do right from this button. Then once the file's imported, you can go ahead and apply the package similar to the other ones that we've done. Once the package is applied, then we should be done with the purchasing and AP setup, and we can move on to our next package, which is going to be fixed assets. Thanks for joining the session today. If there's any other questions on getting started with Business Central, please feel free to reach out to our team at any time. Thank you.